Carlo, we're at the FQXI conference dealing with observers and events, particularly in quantum physics and in cosmology, the smallest and the biggest. Uh, and in understanding events, uh, which are things that happen through time, w we naturally are getting to the concept of time. And what is time? And this is a major controversy and interest in, in physics and general relativity and quantum mechanics, uh, time seems to be at, at, at uh, opposite uh, views in terms of the fundamentals here. So if, if we're saying that the universe is more fundamentally events than objects, okay, I'll give you that for a moment, uh, what does that imply about the, n the nature of time? When we say time, we mean uh, a lot of different things. A very uh, articulate complicated things time. We think time as one line which goes from minus infinity to plus infinity which is oriented, the past is different from the future. We have a very complicated notion of time um, which is uh, in our intuition, in our education, how we were told time is. Um, it's pretty clear that time is not like that. Time is different from from that. It's pretty clear because we can make experiment. If we had a if we have a, a, a clock, a watch like this one, and another like this one, we make one higher, one lower, and then we bring them back. And if they, if these were better clocks than what they are, uh, we would see a difference. So what is it? Is it this that go faster in the real time, which is this one, or this goes slower in the real time? And, and the reason one? is is that one is closer to the center of gravity. One is cl closer to the Earth, so <laughs> the mass sort of slows down time. <laughs> so. so there isn't one time. There's one time per each movement uh, per each position, per each... Uh, and that's a fundamental times. point of general relativity. That's a, one of the key discoveries of Einstein. Right. And at the time, it was a uh, hundred years ago, was a, a, a remarkable intuition by Einstein. Now is, is, is something which is checked in the laboratory. Um, in fact, everybody can do that. One can buy for a few thousand uh, mm. dollars uh, uh, clocks precise enough to see the difference, a different, a different altitude. Well, our GPS wouldn't work without it. We'd be the GPS <laughs> wouldn't work without it. Uh, you know, so we'd be this way idea off. of a single time is just wrong. It's factually wrong, and in fact, I think it goes fa more far than that. If we want to write a quantum theory of gravity, uh, I believe we better forget about a time variable or some time variables, and we better say um, this is the universe. It has not variables, and uh, what the theory describes is the relation between these without having any need to say this is the true time, this is the true time, or this is the time variable. So I think uh, at the fundamental level, the world doesn't need time. It needs to, um, we need to be able to describe how quantities vary with respect to one another. This does not mean that there is no change. It changes ubiquitous. Change is, nature is change, is to change. Um, uh, but change is not sort of uh, nicely happening all together in a single, like there's a big clock out of the universe. So it's critical that we, we really distinguish th the difference between change and time. Yeah. Because that, that's really fundamental. Yeah. Uh, is, this a, is this a measurement issue or a fundamental issue? It's a fundamental issue. Okay. I think that at the fundamental level, uh, everything indicates, uh, everything meaning what we have understood so far about the world, generativity, quantum mechanics, uh, that uh, we should forget about the idea of a fundamental time variable in terms of which things change. Uh, but time is critical in at least classical or classical quantum mechanics. The Schrodinger equation is over time. Right. Uh, I think the Schrodinger equation is an approximation. It's like up and down, right? Uh, up and down are very real. Yeah. That's up and yeah. that's out. Yeah. I cannot walk on the ceiling and yeah. so on and so forth. But they're not fundamental. If you just go with an astronaut on a, right, on, right, on, right. On, on a little capsule, oh, there's no up and down, yeah. we're actually the same. So we do understand up and down, but not as fundamental things right. of reality. Right. It's something that appears in some approximation, some regime. The same is for the Schrodinger equation or for the Newtonian time. Newtonian time is good when things don't move too fast with respect to one another, when there's not enough uh, gravity, and uh, we're, we're f far away from the Planck scale. Yeah, because Newton is a, uh, a, uh, an approximation of relativity at normal speeds exactly. and activities, exactly. and they're almost imperceptibly different. It's only when you go 
close to the speed of light in some way that you get perceptual. Very different. Very different. Very different. Right. You see, um, but how does that affect the quantum mechanics? The, the time in, in quantum mechanics, which seems to be more fundamental. I don't think so. I think that quantum mechanics can be formulated in a slightly more general formulation than the Schrodinger equation one, as a uh, theory that gives us transition amplitudes between variables without saying which one is the time variable. So quantum mechanics admits to be formulated in a way which is consist consistent with uh, generativity, with what we've learned. Let me put it this way. It's Newton that has convinced everybody that there should be a time independent from change. When Newton uh, uh, wrote the Principia and insisted on that, nobody believed him. Leibniz protested, everybody protested, complained. Uh, why? Because the ancient way of thinking about time, which goes back to Aristotle, that is the same until, until Descartes, mm. is that there's no time. There's just things changing, and time is just a way we use uh, to label uh, some Sequences change. Sequences of events. Right. Yeah. So that's Aristotle's definition of time. Time is the measure of change. So what do we mean by time? Um, there's a sun that goes up, goes down, goes up, goes down. So time is a counting of the days, is counting of change. Newton said, oh, no, wait a minute. It's easier to write physics <laughs> if we imagine that right, there is a right. time even when nothing happens. Yeah. So the real question is, when nothing happens, does time passes or not? Newton would say yes. I mean, nothing happens, but nevertheless, time goes. Aristotle, and I think modern physics, is saying no. There's nothing that happens when nothing happens. There's no time when nothing happens. Time is just a, a way of counting how things change. Well, why, why is that not semantics? Because if nothing's changed, you can't measure anything, because if you measure it, then that's a something that goes through the process. So I, I'm trying to understand, why, why is that not just a kind of a tautology, a, a, a semantic, if there's no change, there's no time? It becomes relevant when you want to write the fundamental theory of the world. Okay, sure. Do you write it sure. by saying, this is my t variable, right. which is the flowing of time, right. and then I write how things change in t, right. or... Which is the, cl the cl classic quantum mechanics. Which is the classical quantum mechanics. Or do you write by saying, these are the possible observables of the world, okay. and that's an equation that tells me how they're related to one another without any specific things called it time. So it becomes crucial, this difference, when you want to write a physical theory. So if we have events being the most fundamental um, uh, property of, uh, of the universe, uh, how do then the events create the sense of time? Uh, the sense of time, it's uh, something related to our whole feeling of time passing. So, so that's the wrong term. It's, it's uh, our, our, our uh, we'll just leave it to be in, in, the, in the physical realm. Oh. Take the psychology out of it for a minute. We'll okay. add that later. Okay, so I think that uh, w what physics tell us is that there are processes um, so given something, something else come out of it, and so there's change. Uh, if we have a number of these changes, we can arbitrarily choose some of the variables and use it to track the change. Okay. So mm -hmm. we can use the sun going up and down and say yeah. that's what, what I call time. Yeah. Um, or the pulsing of an atom. Or the pulsing of an atom. Or, uh, yeah. uh, quantum gravity is telling us that, uh, in this way we build a clock, right? That's a clock. Quantum gravity is telling us that no good clock, no perfect clock exists. So you always will have clocks that go wrong with respect to one another. You always have clocks that uh, uh, don't last forever because they come down, they break. You choose a variable, but then uh, even the sun at some point will right. stop burning. And then, uh, <laughs> so um, in a sense, quantum gravity is a discovery that this change is not nicely ordered. Mm. Already special relativity uh. is the discovery that the events are not Simultaneous, completely ordered. Yeah. Yeah. Some are neither past nor future. Yeah. So just time is much more, com the temporal relations, the, the structure of change is much more complicated, articulated, than the simple linear long line from the past to the future that is in our intuition.